बुद्धं सरनं गच्छामी धम्मं सरनं गच्छामी संघं सरनं गच्छामी दुतियं पि बुद्धं सरनं गच्छामी दुतियं पि धम्मं सरनं गच्छामी दुतियं पि संघं सरनं गच्छामी तातियं पि बुद्धं सरनं गच्छामी तातियं पि धम्मं सरनं गच्छामी तातियं पि संघं सरनं गच्छामी पानाति पाताविरमनि सिखापदं समादियामि अदिन्नादानाविरमनि सिखापदं समादियामि कामि सुमिच्छाचाराविरमनि सिखापदं समादियामि मुसावादाविरमनि सिखापदं समादियामि सुरामेरय मज्जपमादत्तानाविरमनि सिखापदं समादियामि समंता चक्रवालेशु अत्रा गच्छन्तु देवता सद्धं मं मुनिराजस सुनंतु सग मुक्तं धम्मसवन कालो आयं भदंता धम्मसवन कालो आयं भदंता धम्मसवन कालो आयं भदंता नमो तस्स भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्धस्स नमो तस्स भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्धस्स नमो तस्स भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्धस्स 
Akusalang bikhave pajahat sakka bikhave akusalang pajahitum no chetam bikhave sakka abhavis akusalang pajahitum nahang evang vadeyam akusalang bikhave kave pajahatati yasma cha ko bikave sakka akusalam pajahitum tasmahan evam vadami akusalam bikave pajahatati sadu 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 Dear <coughs> members of the Mangala Vihara committee members, chairman and all the members and the devotees and all those who are gathered here. Good evening, all of you. Uh, very happy to see you in this uh, congregation. Today is the last day of our Dhamma Talk series. I hope that we had a very fruitful talks during the period so that learning Buddhism and understanding on oneself and understanding of our sansaric life and also entirely we were enlightened through the Buddha's teachings how to be good and how to do good. That was the main theme that were focused on our Dhamma, Dhamma Talk series. So, in today's Dhamma sharing, I would like to draw your attention on the topic, removing our bad karma through positivity. Basically, uh, as we all know, Positive thinking is something discussed in throughout the world today. So the world is changed, not by negativity but by positivity. Even the human life from the childhood up to the old age, even in the sansaric life, one can overcome all the suffering and the dif difficulties only through positivity. That is why entire Buddha, Buddha's teaching is based on positivity and positive thinking. Some of the Western and Eastern scholars, they try to emphasize that Buddhism is pessimistic, which talks about the suffering, impermanence, certain negative aspects of the human life, and the reflection of the negative aspects of human body, and which against to entertainment, being pleasureful life, luxurious life, something like that. There are certain misinterpretations on Buddhism. However, even out of the Buddha's teachings, while talking about dukkha or suffering, impermanence, three characteristics of existence, all these teachings are motivated ourselves. They are the negative thinking, negative thoughts, which helpful for make our life a better, this life and hereafter. Because they make, enlighten us. They derive us, motivate us, persuade us, towards the betterment of this life and hereafter. One who really understands these things 
we can identify that they leads us towards the progress or the success of the, this life and hereafter. Therefore, entirely the Buddha's teachings talks about how to be positive and how to succeed, how to lead our life towards the success through the positivity that is the main emphasis on Buddha's teachings. So today's Dhamma sharing will be on how to remove our bad karma through positivity, through the light of the Buddha's teachings. So basically, while focusing on the karma, Buddhism has pointed out a proper way, proper path of understanding. As far as talking about karma, the first step should be, karma should be known. What is karma and what is it? And the cause by which karma comes into play should be known. Why karma comes into existence? Because of which are the causes that led to the emergence of the karma and how it comes into effective. And the diversity in karma should be known. And result of the karma should be known. The cessation of karma should be known. The path of practice leading to the cessation of karma should be known. This is the progressive path that elaborated in Buddhism with regard to the karma. So why this is called process and progressive path? Because without knowing, one cannot find the practices leading to the cessation of karma. That is equivalent to the formula found in the Noble Eightfold Path. So entirely Buddha, Buddhist teaching, Buddha's teachings is based on Noble Eightfold Path which starts from knowing and the path leading to the cessation. So even while we are talking about the theory of karma, this path is essential to understand and to remove the bad karma while cultivating the positive or good come. Therefore, this is the process. Then what is basically come? As we know, Buddha has clearly emphasized chetanahang bhikkave kammang vadami intention, volition. I tell you is come. The Buddha says that the karma is the intention, the volition, mental concomitance that arises in our mind. How it becomes karma? Chetaitva kammang karoti. One is performing certain deeds with the particular volition. With the negative volition we do bad come. With positive volitions we do good come. So the come or the human action, human behavior depends on the volitions, the process of thoughts, concomitants and the intentions that arises in one's mind. That is why Buddha has pointed out that come is nothing but the intention or the volition of the individual. Since Buddhism talks about the cause and effect theory, which is called Hetu Pachaya, Hetu Phala, dependent origination. 
So the reason for the karma is the volition. Why karma emerges? Because of the volition. So the, that means the intentions, mental thoughts, ideas which arises in the mind that leads us to do karma in different ways. So that is why Buddha says the karma is nothing but the intention. Chetaitva kammam karoti, one who creates volitions and concomitant, they do actions. How they do actions? By bodily, verbally and mentally. By way of body, speech and intellect. It means the mentally. Kaya kam, vachi kam, mano kam. So that is what should be known according to the Buddha's teachings. The process of the understanding, the first thing is to know what the karma is. It is what we originates our, in our mind as the volition, thoughts, mental ideas, views as well. So then, further talking about the cause by which karma comes into play is, Buddha says, contacts. Why karma comes into existence? Because of the contacts. The Pali term is passa. Because of the contacts, karma comes into existence. When we are contacting physically, mentally and verbally, then that's, its result would be a kind of action whether they are positive or negative, good or bad. And diversity in karma also should be known. What is diversity in karma? Diversity in karma means because of the karma and the actions or deeds done, how we gain diverse existences like, you know, what we were learning in previous talks, like to be born in heavenly places, to be born in four woeful existences, such as hell, as well as the uh, animal realm, ghost, greedy ghost realm, and asura realm, something like that. They are the diversity. So then the result of karma also should be known. The result of karma means how we experience us in different realms. How we experience us, how we gain experiences in different realms. As a human being, how we gain experiences in diverse way. How we maintains our life is the result of karma. And further Buddha says that cessation of karma should be known. How we can cessation of karma? That is the not contacting, removing the contact. That is called neck karma. That is called neck karma. Only through neck karma means renunciation from the contacts, we can cease the karma. And the path leading to the cessation of karma means practicing of the Noble Eightfold Path. So, as far as concern in the Buddhist theory of karma, this gradual and the progressive path is very important. So, that is why Buddhism points out that one should try to know what the come and from, the, from there un, until the uh, leading to the cessation of come practices, understanding this process should be really understand by understanding the come concept. 
then uh, even there are certain misconceptions regarding the kam according to the buddhist teachings buddha has pointed out in anguttara nikaya that there are three misunderstandings on kam the belief that everything is a result of acts in previous lives it means that someone may believe that everything happens because of previous kam what we have done in our previous life sansarik life that is a misunderstanding everything does not happens because of the past kam or previous kam if we say like that buddhism comes under an stream extremism so buddhism is completely against to that so buddhism doesn't doesn't say about everything happens due to the previous kam or past kam that is a misunderstanding when we happen something normally we try to say that it is our kam right but some they are happening due to different socio political economic and the cultural reasons and the geo diverse geo uh, uh, diverse incidents and situations in the world but we try to incorporate all the things into kam which is easy to define since we can easily define we try to incorporate all the things into that that is why the buddhism says the kamma is given only 20% out of the 100 as instance according to the niyama dharma kamma niyama it talks about it gives the 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 uh, weight of 20% out of 5 1% out of 5 something like that then the second misinterpretation is the belief that old is the result of creation by a supreme being even though this is completely rejected in buddhism some people try to say that everything depends on a particular superhuman being superhuman god or someone else above beyond our control and the belief that everything arises without reason no cause which is called ahetu appachavad everything arises without reason or cause so that is those are the certain misinterpretations on the kamma according to buddhism however as far as concerning the teaching of kamma it can be classified under kusala and akusala kusala means skillfulness or we call wholesome akusala unskillfulness unwholesome so basically according to the nature of the volitions that leads human action the kamma is determined as kusala or akusala wholesome or unwholesome like that so uh, with the positive intentions when we behave with positive in- intentions the our reaction would be positive then we call wholesome or kusala kamma with negative volitions when we react when we respond to the negative relations that kam is called unwholesome which are harmful to oneself and others this life and hereafter so therefore buddha has pointed out this understanding of the kusala and nakusala wholesome and unwholesome is most important in maintaining our life then what is bad kam as you know bad kam in buddhism 
clearly points out under the tenfold unwholesome deeds dasa akusala kamma pata dasa akusala kamma pata its opposite is dasa kusala kamma pata ten wholesome deeds so dasa kusala kamma pata it refers to the tenfold unwholesome deeds that we perform through our body bodily verbally and mentally threefold bodily actions three fourfold unwholesome verbal actions threefold unwholesome mental actions so that comes under the bad karma we call bad karma how we behave in negative way with the negative volitions when our mind is corrupted overwhelmed with the negative volitions negative concomitants negative thoughts negative ideas negative views wrong views then our response goes to the negative way like ten unwholesome deeds points out so the bodily bad actions are killing stealing committing sexual misconduct no need to explain further you know that even earlier talks we were discussing on them and verbal bad come line divisive speech harsh speech and talking nonsense nonsense and the mental bad come covetousness ill will and wrong view they are mental thoughts mental volitions that arises which are overwhelmed in our mind and always make our mind stressed stressful because of these three mental bad come so buddhism points out that entirely ten unwholesome deeds are bad come we have accumulated this life and previous lives as well why we need to remove bad come what is the importance of removing bad come why we need to remove bad come since we are doing bad come engage in bad come more and more that brings us to be born in woeful realms such as four woeful existences hell apaya tirachana o animal realm peta o hungry ghosts and asura a class of beings lower to gods according to their present and past karma so no one would like to be born in hell right in previous talk i was emphasizing with the pictorials what happens when we were born in the hell right the punishments given by the hell is mentioned in different discourses like uh devadoota bala pandita and those discourses clearly mention so therefore we all are interested in we are we hope to be born in heavenly places that is all we have that expectation we like to not taught to not uh, harmful to our life we like to be very luxurious so that is why if we intend to have a very happy prosperous luxurious and the comfortable life here and hereafter we need to remove our bad come we need to refrain from doing bad come according to the buddha's teaching so why how we can do that further elaborating due to the bad come unwholesome actions 
lead to an unfavorable existence even though they were born in human realm which is found in chulla kama vibhanga sutta it clearly emphasizes that when someone performs unwholesome actions or the bad karma it leads to have an unfavorable existences even though they were born in human realms such as having short lived short life span sickly ugly insignificant poor low families born in low families like low caste witless etc so they are clearly emphasized that is why one should try to overcome and remove bad karma as buddha has pointed out then how we can overcome this bad karma only through positivity so buddha points are pointed out that one can overcome bad karma only through positivity what do you mean by positive positive it is a mental attitude positivity is a mental mental attitude it doesn't have a physical reality but it is a mental attitude that originates in one's mind admits into the mind thoughts words and images that are conducive to growth expansion and success further positivity expects good and favorable results and it anticipates happiness joy health and a successful outcome of every situation and action that is what we are expecting through out our life process good and favorable results anticipates happiness joy health and successful right these are the things that we need to achieve that we struggle that we are struggling throughout our life to achieve these things in the name of economically economic development in the name of we are doing some professions jobs or whatever so everything is for the these things right for the for having a very favorable and good results with happiness joy health and successful so therefore this intention this idea is called positive or positivity some people try to say that positivity or positive thinking is something like you know the scientific or the management concept no that is our own expectations if we intend to have certain positive results that is the positive thinking positive idea maintaining or cultivating positive idea according to buddha since at the inception of dhamma talk i was focusing on buddhism entirely depends on the positivity right why i have mentioned such a word such a phrase because you see all these most of the key words found in buddhist teachings are focusing on the positivity and the positive thinking while focusing on the pali tripitaka pali canonical text we can find pali words for positive thinking and actions so many all these words are focusing on how to be positive and how to do positive how to be positive through the thinking how to be positive through the actions like samma sankap right thoughts 
chanda o kattu kamyata desire to act chanda kattu kamyata chandata wholesome to dis- wholesome desire chetana intention adithana determination and res- or resolution sankhara activities or determination pati sanchikkati considers yoniso manasikara proper consideration ussaha lifting up daring and venture appamada carefulness and or oh, diligence samaditti right view you see all these concepts talks about the positive or the positive how to maintain positive thinking further kusala punya kusala kamma punya kamma wholesome or meritorious actions they talks about the positivity sam appadan right exertion iddhipad basis of success virya strength vayam effort padhan striving exertion panya wisdom sati mindfulness saddha confidence abinihar great aspiration you see all these words are talking about the positive thinking and positive action wherever we can see these words are elaborated in pali tripitaka and the commentaries they are used to denote the positive idea and the positive aspect of the human thoughts and human behavior that is why entirely buddhist teachings are on the basis of the positive thinking and positive action accordingly then how to be positive normally the human nature is our mind is mind always ready to welcome negativity right that is a nature right always our mind is ready to welcome negativity negative thoughts negative ideas negative views when someone says ask you to do something very easy to say that i can't that is the most preferable preferable answer right when someone request something the most easiest word is i don't have no right no and can't very easy answers also when someone asks you to do something then our response is something like no right so very easy to say like that rather than thinking over giving a positive response our mind always ready to think in the sense of negativity that is the nature right so that is called anusotagami anusotagami means one who follows the flowing stream like you know when when flow in a water or lake right a river it is easy to go where the the water is flow in that direction right very easy that is anusotagami normally the worldliness like putujjanas we are ready to welcome and embrace that aspect but buddhism points out that one who cultivates positivity is 
equivalent to a person who is trying to go up towards upwards the show like you know the pati sota gami one who try to uh, reach the upwards not the the growing or the flowing side upside that is pati sota gami it is very difficult task you have to waste much effort strength and also to achieve that would be a very difficult and challenging part even in our, in our life so that is why buddha says that being positivity is very difficult rather than being negativity so very difficult to maintain negative bad or the negative aspects negative things negative ideas negative actions so very difficult to do some something positive right so that is why the characters the human beings are differentiated under the pati sota gami and anu sota gami so then buddha says that one can be positive through inner work and training attitude and thoughts do not change overnight very difficult to change right the most difficult thing is in the world is changing change in our attitudes and the thoughts but we should have the inner work and training for the to be positive and through the motivation drives one forward to act and accomplish that can be done by oneself self motivation right it is also very important factor for the to be to be positive and will power and self discipline so the buddha points have pointed out that through these three one can be positive and one can do positive actions let's see the nature of positive mind because the mind is the forerunner according to buddhism right mano pubbam gama dhamma mano setta mano maya mano mind is the forerunner therefore the most important thing is we should try to generate positive mind rather than focusing on positive action when mind when we creates positive mind automatically our action would be positive why mind give give gives commands to our physical body so then buddha said that positive mind is not an accident why it cannot generate within a second a minute a day within a week month or a year it is something should be developed gradually so that is what the buddha buddha practiced in sansaric life right while he was practice in the perfections what he did was he entirely practice 10 perfections gradually to the from the simple level up to the utmost level by practice in gradual path so it cannot happen like that is the buddhas are the most the 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 person who has developed the positive thinking in it, in its utmost level through the alone process it is not something that can be done during this life itself 
but maybe sansaric life we have to cultivate. That is why positive mind is not an accident. It is something should be cultivated more and more. When we cultivate in the mind more and more, then we can create a positive mind. And it is something you do on purpose. The cultivation of positive mind doesn't happen like, you know, uh, unexpectedly. It is purposely one has to do, one has to cultivate. No one can do for you. And you create a positive mind by focusing on positive things. Because positive mind can be created only by focusing on positive things. By focusing on negative things, we cannot focus on positive mind. Because the expected result is negative. While expect expected result is negative, one cannot create a positive mind. That is why Buddha has pointed out it is very important. Why this positive thinking, how thinking, action and habits become, generates positive results? You know, as further mentioned, the mind is forerunner. The positive thinking is the most important. Then, while we have positive thinking, what we do and our behavior, our actions also would be positive. That would create positive actions. And when those actions are doing again and again, that would be a habit. Then we call them as positive habits. What the Buddhas did was the same. Right? You suppose that uh, practice in generosity, dana paramita, the perfections of generosity by the bodhisattvas, it is something like, you know, uh, the action which is creating a habitual action. Then, only then, one can continue with that up to the utmost level. Then, finally, positive habit would provide positive results. What we expect this life and hereafter so that is how thinking, action and habits are simultaneously getting together positive while developing and cultivating positive thinking. So that is why Buddha mentioned one should try to focus on positive thinking and be positivity, be in positivity then the actions, habits and results would be positive. So then what is important is, always Buddhism try to focus on the chitta mano vinyana, it means something like the mind, comes into priority, forana, because of that. You suppose that the the this is the gradual path starting from head to down. Positive thinking to positive results. Then, in other side we cannot achieve that way. That's why. That is why Buddha points out that to give up the negative. Buddha mentioned that don't entertain negative, unwholesome thoughts. Do not let the negative, unwholesome mind to lead your life. 
that should be the motto of your life also right do not let the negative unwholesome mind to lead your life if we allow the negative unwholesome thoughts to leads your life mind to lead your life definitely you are you will be deteriorated in your life this and hereafter because always you are leading by negative unwholesome thoughts which will generate unwholesome and the bad come unwholesome or bad come simultaneously buddha said that one should develop positive stir up energy that you may win what is not won that you may attain what you not attain that you may realize what is not realized that is how to develop the positive that is called kusala punya wholesome good and the positive words emphasize in that way so basically unwholesome is referring to the negative negativity whereas wholesome is referring to the positivity the buddha points out that one should stir up one's own energy that uh, you may win what is not won so that is how he had focused on the developing the positivity once the buddha has given one one of the most important and the enthusiastic the motivational quote found in buddhism is this this one which is found in uh, anguttara nikaya what i have pointed out in the as the theme of today's sharing you see once having addressed his disciples buddha said abandon evil this is a kind of instruction given by the buddha reflect on this buddha said abandon evil o monks one can abandon evil monks if it were impossible to abandon evil i will not ask you to do so but as it can be done therefore i say abandon evil how motivational quote is it it includes the cause and effect as well he to phala he to pacche right everything is there buddha persuaded the bhikkhus the monks elaborate in the importance of abandoning evil by waking them uh, i mean the allowing them to think contemplate on the importance of abandoning evil buddha says one can abandon evil look at the red colored quotations i would not ask you to do so if it is impossible it can be done therefore i say abandon evil very motivational quotation found in pali tripitaka with regard to the removing our bad karma through positivity further elaborating this point buddha says if this abandoning of evil would bring harm and suffering 
i would not ask you to abandon it but as the abandoning of evil brings well being and happiness therefore i say abandon evil buddha says that if abandoning evil will bring harm and suffer into you i never say never ask you to do so i will ask you to do so because if you when you abandon evil evil means the bad it brings well being and happiness so that is why with that justification buddha persuaded his disciples to remove bad remove the bad come you see how this quotation is how powerful is it you suppose that just as a father who is in the deathbed addressing one son child children the as it is it uh, it looks like the final utterance of the father who is in deathbed right just as giving the reasonable facts how you have to do this and that something like that buddha emphasized with compassionate mind as a way of motivating his disciples to removing their bad with cultivating positivity through those motivational ideas further buddha mentioned motivating monks to cultivate good cultivate the good o oh monks one can cultivate the good this is the how to cultivate positivity if it were impossible to cultivate the good i would not ask you to do so but as it can be done therefore i say cultivate the good one can do one can cultivate them by oneself but until we are living with negative sense negative thoughts negative mentality we will not cultivate the good so that is why the mind is the forerunner to all further buddha said if this cultivation of the good would bring harm and suffering i would not ask you to do cultivate it as the cultivation of the good brings well being and happiness therefore i say cultivate the good you see how buddha pointed out the way one should cultivate the good with enthusiasm with a very great motivational way so what this is what this emphasizes buddha has clearly mentioned that when someone remove bad that would bring well being and happiness while someone cultivate good even at that time one can bring well being and happiness this life and hereafter that is why buddha has persuaded his disciples to remove bad while cultivating good that is how he has emphasized on that point however in order to cultivate this positivity the only way that the buddha has pointed out is the practice of the noble eightfold path which leads to the cessation of suffering which is called uh ari ari atangi ari astangika marge we call the noble eightfold path the path lead into the cessation of suffering right view right thought right speech right action right livelihood right striving right mindfulness and 
right concentration so buddha said that one who practices this is classified under sila samadhi and panya one who practice this positive and progressive path that is the only way for achieving success according to the buddha's teaching so the being positivity the cultivating positivity is the cultivation of the noble eightfold path no other way to cultivate positivity then i am not going to discuss elaborate them in detail however that is what buddha has mentioned as under the uh, dukkha nirodha gamini patipada ariya satcha the fourth one out of the out of the four noble truths so then uh most probably uh people think that there are two ways for achieving one's own goal i mean to achieve the life goal and achieve the success buddha has pointed out that most probably people use two ways but one is called the ayachana hetu something expecting to achieve by prayer something expected to achieve by prayer just ayachana is something praying right praying to unseen power and patana hetu by wishes patana means by wishes the buddha said i don't teach that they are to be obtained by prayer ayachana hetu by wish patana hetu if one could obtain them by prayer or wish who would not pray or wish for them who would not pray or wish for them from morning to evening at night even right everyone will pray and everyone will do wishes so the nothing can be achieved by praying or wishing they are some kind of a, a, a way of blessing that we needs to overcome our mental stress and some other uh, to concentrate our mind they will help but they cannot achieve our goals and if expectations the buddha said that is why they have been rejected by the buddha as the causes for one's own success one cannot attain achieve something only by praying or wishing then one can achieve one's own happiness only through practice in the noble qualities that the buddha has elaborated as an instance how to increase one's fame buddha has mentioned there are seven qualities one can cultivate so that achieve in fame in one's life उत्थानवतो सतीमतो सुचिकमस निसमकारिनो संयतस च धम्म जीविनो अस्य अपमत्तस यसोभिवड्डति 
Yasa means fame. Yaso bhivadati. One can increase one's own frame only by practicing these characteristics, these qualities, exert oneself, uttana. Be mindful, do pure deeds, act considerately, be restrained, live according to the law and be watchful. These are the seven practices one has to be done for the for increase in one's fame according to the Buddha. Rather than practice in these things, if someone thinks to be fame by praying or wishing, that is impossible according to the Buddha's teachings. Further Buddha said, rather than praying or wishing, one should recognize the causes of downfall. So downfall cannot be overcome only by praying no vision. Right? Then one should try to understand, recognize the causes, negligence, indolence, want in much, which is called mahichata, discontent, unsystematic attention, lack of understanding, friendship with evil, devotion to things evil, not devotion to good things, as mentioned in Anguttara Nikaya. Further, in Parabhava Sutta says, the causes for, of downfall of the individual. So I mean that, what Buddha has said is, without recognizing and overcoming the negative behavior, if someone try to achieve, overcome one's downfall through wishing or praying, it is impossible. Further, Buddha says that the success cannot be achieved by praying no wishing. So that Having success, one should try to recognize the causes of success like earnestness, energetic effort, want in little, contentment, systematic attention, understanding, friendship with good, devotion to things good and non-devotion, devotion to things evil. These are factual as the Buddha has mentioned accordingly. Therefore, we have to be considered on these things as the points one should try to practice in one's life. So, Buddha points out that in Dhammapada, one, by ourselves, evil done. We do evil by ourselves, not by someone else. By ourselves, we pain endure, endure. By ourselves, we cease from wrong. By ourselves, become we pure. No one saves us but ourselves. No one can and no one may. We ourselves must walk the path. Buddhas merely show the way. It looks like a modern hymn, which really talks about how one should be one's own saviour, how one should purify oneself, even though someone can purify you physically, no one can purify you psychologically or mentally. So, you are the responsible for that. That is why Buddha said, one should try to cultivate positivity so that overcoming bad karma, or the, so that overcoming negativity. So, this is one of the most important 
motivational factor why while we are not understanding one's own potential we try to pray for others we try to wish and then we try to liberate with the support from someone else but no one can do that but only for you you are the your own savior according to the buddha's teachings so therefore we always try to erase negative while cultivating the positive which comes under sammapadana you know sammapadana right one of the main concepts found in buddha's buddhist philosophy striving to erase the negative and cultivate the positive one should try to energetic and practice one's own behavior so that achieve in right endeavors then buddha said that one should try to prevent the arising of evil and unprofitable states of mind not yet arisen anuppanna nang papaka nang akusala nang dhamma nang anuppadaya one should try to cultivate one's mind uh not to arise evil and unprofitable states of our mind then uppanna nang akusala nang dhamma nang pahanaya destroy the evil and unprofitable states of mind that have already arisen uppanna nang kusala nang dhamma nang anuppanna nang kusala nang dhamma nang upadaya generate the profitable states of mind not yet arising it means that just try to cultivate the profitable states like wholesome deeds which we have not cultivated yet and uppanna nan kusala nan dhamma nan paripuriyaya one should try to in inculcate or the cultivate or the maintain the continuance order in betterment increase culture and fulfillment of those arise and profitable states of mind it means that one should try to develop gradually develop cultivate the wholesome deeds wholesome we have already generated so this uh, diligence i mean the this uh, determination eagerness strength is what buddha has pointed out as the way of being positive so then the entirely buddha has pointed out that one can remove bad come only through practice in these four what are the four preventing not allowing to generate bad come then destroying already the bad come we have already generated and generate new wholesome deeds and the maintains the continuation of the continuing the already generated wholesome deeds only that exertion will help you to remove your bad karma uh, according to the buddha's teachings therefore we always should try to uh, balance this application of virya the buddha further said that one should avoid the two extremes like too much exertion acharadha virya 
and to little exertion ati lina viriya you see whenever buddha has given certain teachings he has incorporated it into the middle path one who works with too much exertion he he goes into extreme and one who practice too little exertion atilina viriya he is also subjected to decline while buddha said one should try to maintain the middle path middle way of practice in viriya then only can uh, one could achieve one's own expectations then buddha said that therefore one should try to commence on commencement initiating energy arambha dato joyful then one should pass in over energy continue continuity right nikkama dato and get in beyond energy conclusion parakkama dato it means that when we start something with energy it has to be continued same energy and until the conclusion one should try to maintain the energy equally normally what we do is we just start with initiate with energy and while continuing we just drop down then even it is not only for the spiritual progression but also the material progression we do like that so the buddha has pointed out that the being positivity is not start in something with energy it when its initiation but the one who is positive minded one who has cultivated positivity equally start initiating passing over and conclusion commencement continuity and conclusion all three aspects stages they try to maintain the same energy that is the nature of the positive thinker positive mind minded person so therefore we have to consider in that way so the buddha said that one should try to be a positive thinker so that overcoming bad karma not only the bad karma so that cultivate in the good karma or the wholesome one should be a positive thinker while we are in the status of negative thinker automatically we are deteriorating our life this life and hereafter so normally our mind we are the negative thinkers so what our exertion or the energy virya should be cultivated to be positive thinker according to the buddha's teachings that is how buddha persuaded motivated his disciples to do good while removing bad things so the positive thinker is always thinking that nothing is impossible nothing is impossible just see this picture when looking at someone may think that it is very difficult task to uh, an elephant to be stay in a bowl like this right but it may be impossible but further if someone has a determination and positive thinking positive thoughts definitely he he can overcome it that itself that is why positive thinker always sees the invisible 
he feels the intangible he achieves the impossible so the buddha's teaching always instruct advises us to achieves the impossible so that is how the buddha has leads our life to the material progression and spiritual progression how to balance it equally so therefore with that uh, uh idea i would like to wind up today's dhamma sharing so what we should try to understand is we are our own savior no one can save us even the buddhas cannot buddhas can show the path so the going through that that path practice in that path is our duty right even the buddha could not save his own brother devadatt right if he would uh, able to do so definitely with the request of his own previous wife he will do that but he cannot do that because that is the law that is the karma that is why we should always try to think that one is one soul savior and therefore with that positive mind we have to cultivate good by removing the bad say sadhu three times sadhu 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 Okay, uh, Q&A, right, Pante? Q&A? Okay, okay. Q&A time. Any questions? Last session, seriously. When Bhante goes back to Sri Lanka, I think it um, will be very difficult to clarify any doubt. Good evening, Bhante, and thank you for the Dharma talk. Uh, I have a question. So we do not know what kind of unwholesome karma that we have done in our previous lives. So, you know, when the bad results bear fruit, right, in this life, so there's a lot of challenges or difficulties that we encounter. So what is the right approach or how should we think in terms of managing the life situation? Okay. <laughs> I mean, thinking positive is obviously one of the ways but is there any other better way we can do to overcome the difficulty okay uh, actually that's a very good question how we can know about the b- previous come right we cannot because until we are realizing the status of the the jnana which which we call the knowledge on pubbe niva pubbe nivasa nusati jnana understanding on the previous births we cannot understand what what we have done previously that can be done the 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 buddhas pacheka buddhas and the arahants only right then what we should try to do is just do no need to think of previous karma we have done since we have done good previously since we have done wholesome deeds we are here only that we can think otherwise we will not be here as human beings with with you know the full of all these things so then what we have to do is just try to live in proce- present moment present life and tr- should try to cultivate the good for the well being of next life so that is the way we can uh settle down that issue
questions? Ante, I have a question. It is easy to say, I think, to the brother's point, to be positive. Um, but I think many people lean to religion <clears throat> is also hoping that there is a miracle, there's a wish, or there's a faith that by doing good, that something good will manifest in your life. And I think um, perhaps in our culture, in um, Theravada Buddhism, there is a significant tone down that you, you are your own, you know, um, you are owner of your karma, the heir of your karma. And um, in times of difficulties, that kind of positive mindset may be very difficult to, to really, you know, you just hope that there is something that you can cling on to. To that, what is your advice that, you know, even as very logical um, and practicing Buddhist, we can have faith that, you know, um, positive thinking, doing good karma will definitely bring us to, you know, the good path. Actually, uh, even in previous talk, I was talking about the faith, right? Normally, in Buddhism, clearly emphasized that there are two types of faith we generate. What is, one is called blind faith, right? And the uh, second one is uh, that, that the Pali term says Amulika Saddha, blind faith. Akaravati Saddha with knowledgeable and understanding. The, the faith generating through understanding the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha properly. Then if we do whatever the things like uh, with faithfulness or the Saddha, offering so whatever, with the second type of faith or sadha that would generate the wholesome. As instance, you suppose that uh, when we say, when we offer flowers to the Buddha, we say like, you know, puja mi buddha kusumena nena punyena mete na cha hotu mokkhaṁ puppaṁ nilāyāti atāyi dhamme kāyo tathāyāti vināsa bhāva. So someone can say that offering flower is a useless. Right? It is a kind of faith-based ritual and activity. So the, the flowers would be vanished and they would be uh, sent away after a few hours. But what we have to do is, just offering, we have to contemplate it, the real nature of the flower, as a way of meditative object. Just as the flower is to be vanishes, cease to, uh, I mean the subject to, to be uh, vanishes, right? The same as our life is to be uh, vanishes. That is the real way of practicing the material offerings and the things like that. So, uh, Without thinking much about materially, materialistic way, always we should try to do something with that knowledge and understanding. So that is what the Buddha said, the importance of practice in the Saddha with understanding, Akaravati. So uh, most probably when we have such kind of issues, when we do without that uh, understanding and without that uh, way of thinking, right? So that is why the Buddha has clearly mentioned these two types. Okay. If there are no more questions, we will wind up. Any more questions? Okay, uh, okay, then uh, since today is the last day of our Dhamma Talk series, I'm very grateful to be here for this year, 2024 Vasa Retreat in, in Mangala Vihara. Uh, I would like to say thanks to all those who invited me, including our Chief Resident Monk, my, one of my noble, compassionate, uh, I mean the noble friends, Pante Silananda for inviting me and the management committee members, 
Dr. Ashwan and all the committee members of the Mangala Vihara for inviting and uh, providing all the necessities, requisites during the stay here and all those who offered dana during three months and all those who looked after us, very compassionate mind and uh, even with, with uh, very much smiling faces, I'm very happy to be like that to the Buddha, as Buddha instructed. The way we smile, it contemplate one's own nature, right? So therefore, it is the very greatest way of, like, you know, uh, expressing our heartfelt friendship and the, our greatness. So therefore, with that uh, compassionate mind, we all uh, did the I mean, they engage in different kinds of meritorious deeds during this period. So, I uh, would like to say thank you so much for everyone who contributed, even those who provided and the provided dana as well. Every day morning and the lunch, they did a lot of good service. I mean, by offering dana, preparing them when we say something good, by uh, preparing them again and again, right? That is how I feel like, you know, even though I missed three months from my country here, being here, I did not uh, feel like I have missed. <laughs> it means that how the, those, the you people treated us, right? Even all these are for the sake of the Buddha Sasana, not for the well-being of oneself, for you or oh, I myself. We all dedicate for the sake of the Buddha Sasana and through that we try to uh, uh, make and uh, we try to cultivate good things for the sake of our, our life, betterment of our life, right? So in this way, we, we should always try to continue all these good things uh, for the sake of the Buddha Sasana as well as for ourselves, our happiness, this life and hereafter. So once again, thank you so much. And attending the Dhamma Sharing series, I see that some people attended regularly. Thank you so much for them once again. And our organizers, they did a lot even rather than uh, she also the video and doing some communication things, right? Even so many people can uh, see them, watch them through the uh, uh, YouTube. Even some people from Sri Lanka, by watching them, they, they call me and they give some comments on that. Like that, uh, it is a great, great task who have contributed much, right? So, I don't want to say even the names of all those who contributed, but you know how you treated and the, for the, this temple as well, right? So, Mangala Vihara is one of the greatest uh, Buddhist temple in Singapore, which provides a yeoman service to the world. With, without expectation, they do the free education providing is a great task. Only through the dissemination of Dhamma, we can illuminate the Buddha's teaching. So that is why, through different, uh, you know, the programs, Mangala Vihara Buddhist Temple always try to uh, support the people with, the, with compassionate mind for, the, uh, for their well-being as well. So therefore, uh, with the, all the merit that we have accumulated, uh, may, may this temple be lone life. Because until this temple lone life, we can do more merits, right? We can accumulate much. This is our own spiritual place. That is why we are here, just as our own home, right? No feel any diversity while coming here. The gate is open for all of us. Therefore, thank you so much. And may all the 
departed ones, including our late founding chief, most venerable M.A. Mahavira Mahathira, because of his perseverance, dedication, and because of his great service, and the, his, uh, you know, the service, we had a very good place like this. Therefore, including him, all the devotees who have contributed to this temple and building this temple and providing the lands and all the things to the, this temple and all the departed ones from your life, from your relatives, may they be well and happy, may they have a good life and may they attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Let us transfer, share these merits with the dedicated divine beings, those who are protecting us, uh, safeguarding us. May all the divine beings have joyful and success wherever they are. May their existences be successful and may they attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Finally, uh, uh, as cons results of these meritorious deeds that we have done during the Vassana retreat, this is not an easy task. We did a great a dedication to come over the temple all the days and attending these activities is a very difficult task. Even your family members contributed a lot, right? If they said, don't go to temple, you cannot do, right? <laughs> you, you, either husband or wife said like that. If they de did some, you know, the obstacles, you cannot do, right? All those People from your family, they helped you as the noble friends. That is why we could accumulate much merit by attending all these activities. Therefore, may all our family members and the, uh, our relatives who are uh, our well-wishers, may all of them have a good life, long life, and may they have a longevity. And, and without any troubles, may they be able to have... A, good life future and their children, your children as well as family members, parents and everywhere. Uh, those who are here and here are, I mean the abroad, may all the, all the relatives be successful in their life and may, they, may all of us be able to attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Aka satha cha bummatta deva naga mahidika punyantang anumoditva chirang rakkantu loka sasanang. Aka satha cha bummatta deva naga mahidika punyantang anumoditva chirang rakkantu loka sasanang. Aka satha cha bummatta deva naga mahidika Punyantang anumoditva chirang rakkantu loka sasanang. Abhivadana silis nichang vadda pachayino chattaru dhamma vaddhanti ayuvanno sukang balang. Ayura rogya sampatti sagga sampatti mevacha ato nibbana sampatti iminate samijyatu. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay.